Lapras is an iconic and a beloved Pokemon, a favorite of many that is commonly used in main game playthroughs. But on the competitive side of things, Lapras is not particularly fantastic. The peak of its power and relevance was in Generation 1, where it is actually quite good as a bulky water type support, but it never quite found its footing beyond that. It does have an excellent HP stat, solid defenses, and a great offensive move pool, plus decent utility options. But that damning ice typing, which has only gotten worse and worse over the years, as well as no good options for recovery and new, more powerful water types releasing in every single game, Lapras has really struggled. Generation 5 OU is a competitive metagame infamous for its significant power creep and volatility. Lapras is not great in general, but Gen 5 OU is the last place you'd expect it to achieve anything. So how is it then that in Smogon Premier League, the highest level team tournament in competitive singles, a Lapras just single-handedly won an extremely important game? And not only that, the player who lost to Lapras was none other than Solwind, a contender for the greatest Pokemon player of all time. How on earth did this happen, folks? Let's find out. But first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to prevent the past paradox form of Goldengo, old money, from artificially inflating the value of his most prized asset, Gimme Ghoul Coins, thus leaving all of these unsuspecting Jimothy Cool non-subscribers in financial ruin. Thank you. Gen 5 OU is a format that completely stands out from every other OU format in the series. This is the only format where a permanent rain setter is present in OU. This means that rain teams are fantastic and at the absolute center of this metagame. And for that reason, a lot of the common OU staples in Gen 5 are rain abusers that you don't often see in other formats. Tentacruel is a prime example. Tentacruel is a pretty average Pokemon in every single other generation, but in Gen 5 OU, it's excellent. Tentacruel's ability range dish, granting extra chip heal in the rain, alongside permanent rain from Drizzle is absurdly powerful. Politoed's Drizzle has both a positive and negative impact. A lot of rain teams are extremely similar and abuse all the same Pokemon. This can make things a bit restrictive with so many team slots that feel like auto includes, but rain can also enable some really crazy stuff sometimes that you don't see in other generations. One of my favorite examples is Feraligator, who can actually be an effective wall breaker on rain teams thanks to Swords Dance, Rain Boosted Aqua Jet, and an extremely powerful Waterfall. You'll see weird sets like Hurricane Moltres or Dragonite on rain teams occasionally, and one of the best rain based abilities that can single handedly turn terrible Pokemon into viable choices choices is hydration. Hydration has the effect of curing a Pokemon's status ailments at the end of each turn if Rain Dance is active. Status immunity is great on its own, but the real merit of this ability is using it in conjunction with Rest. Rest will fully heal you, but then put you to sleep for two turns. But thanks to Hydration, you can heal off that sleep instantly. This turns Rest into a 100% healing move with no drawback, which is absolutely incredible. The most common abuser of this would be Vaporeon, who can get huge value out of that full heal thanks to its great defensive stats. Vaporeon can pose quite a threat as well with rain boosted hydro pump and a solid move pool. Another funny one that has also been used in SPL is Whiskash, which I have covered in a video before. With Dragon Dance and that full heal from rest, along with complete status immunity, this guy can snowball out of control on the right teams. It's a bit gimmicky, but it can work. And then of course we arrive at Lapras, who was also blessed with this amazing ability in Gen 5. As good as hydration is, it still seems hard to justify using Lapras over Vaporeon. Lapras is weak to Stealth Rock and is overall much worse defensively, but Lapras does have some unique tools to set it apart from the other hydration Pokemon. Lapras has access to Curse, a powerful defensive boosting move that raises attack and defense. Rain boosted Waterfall off the back of those attack boosts can be a powerful sweeping option, but this is still a really slow and exploitable Pokemon. So Lapras makes up for its low speed with Ice Shard, a powerful physical priority option. With the right support and in the right matchup, a Lapras can rack up Curse boosts, dodge status ailments completely, heal all the way back up repeatedly with Rest, and defeat those speedy offensive threats with Ice Shard. In a metagame full of dragon types like Latios, Garchomp, and Dragonite, and common flying types too like Landorus and Thunderous Therian, Ice Shard is a really nice option. So these tools are not completely terrible. However, I still think bringing Lapras to SBL against Soulwind, perhaps the strongest Gen 5 OU player in the world, is an absolutely insane move. How did this manage to earn such a monumental win? Let's take a look at the game itself. This is the game where Lapras made a big splash in history, but we'll notice that the player Rua is bringing more than just Lapras as a novel choice. Rua is bringing 
Lantern and Empoleon. Spoiler alert, this lantern never hit the field. We'll never know what the lantern was for. Perhaps some kind of weird thunderous check with Volt Absorb. I don't know. Crazy thing to bring. Even crazier than Lapras, I think. It says something about the kind of player this person is, bringing some some really out there choices. Soul Wind, on the other hand, with a much more standard rain team. This is typical Gen 5 rain. Let's take a look at how this played out and how Rua set up for a Lapras sweep. There is Napoleon on the field. And when I see an Empoleon lead, I'm immediately thinking of Gen 4 OU, where it was quite common as a Focus Sash Hazard Setter and Offensive Opener. And that is indeed what it is here. We, I assume it has Stealth Rock on it. I think that this Nasty Plot might have been expecting Lantern to come in on an electric move. And then you could follow up with a Nasty Plot and a big Focus Blast damage, 1v1 the Lantern. That's probably what that was, because I think Soul Wind is not foolish, is aware that this Empoleon is representing some kind of Focus Sash lead set. So unfortunate to lose Thunderous Theory in this early, because that's the main thing that threatens Lapras, isn't it? This is the greatest trade of all time for Rua. Lapras is looking excellent. I mean, Starmie can still threaten Lapras, as can Keldeo, but the biggest threat to Lapras was definitely Thunderous. So Soulwind goes ahead and goes to Politoed against Starmie. Takes an enormous Thunder, but just wants to get rain out there. Just wants to get rain on the field. Ferrothorn will be able to handle Starmie totally fine. And here is where it begins. Here is where Lapras begins the the big moment. Solwind, not realizing the severity of the situation, goes ahead and makes Stealth Rock. Spoiler alert, those Stealth Rock are not going to get any value this game because this Lapras is never switching out. We're making spikes. Solwind is, it doesn't understand. Solwind does not get it. The Lapras is, is not going to exit anytime soon. And we see the, the very crucial rest come out. Politoed thinks it could Encore to stop the curse, but no, Ice Shard to finish it off. Solwind was for sure coming in to try and Encore this. That's a common a common thing that uh, Politoed runs as a way to handle boost sweepers. Solwind caught off guard here. To be honest, I could have easily made the same mistake relying on the Politoed Encore when I see a cursed Lapras. You, you never see Lapras, frankly. It's never seen. And we know that that... Thunder Paralysis won't be doing anything because of hydration. This is crazy. The Solwind basically just got completely off, caught off guard by this. Which is fair. I mean, who the hell runs Lapras? Healing all the way back to full, by the way. And now Scizor cannot do any damage. Hoping for a crit superpower at this point. That's your only way out. Crit would ignore all the boosts, but... No. Lapras is taking it home. Lapras is bringing this one home. Going for Hydro Pump at this point because Secret Sword is not going to do any damage, factoring in that enormous defense from Curse. Perhaps a critical hit can get you there. No. No, it won't be. It won't be so simple. Even if you get through this Lapras at this point, your only Pokemon remaining is Ferrothorn, and it's over. So I think Solwind's big problem there was getting caught off guard, maybe, you know, against a meta standard team, there are established lines of play, common interactions that you can understand and exploit, but against Lantern and Polyon Lapras, Soul Wind's probably, is he going to go to the Lapras against my guy if I Thunderbolt or Thunder? Who knows what he's going to do? I think that this kind of team also benefits from SPL's best of one format. We're running something unexpected and perhaps counterpicking enemies with teams like this can be very good. If this was a best of three set, Soul Wind could, you know, still have two games to, to bring it back and learn a bit about his opponent in the process, that's something you could consider as well. Congratulations to Rua for this monumental victory. This is going to be on your Pokemon resume forever. And no disrespect to Solwind either, it's happened to the best of us, losing to some random off-meta stuff or getting counter-picked, counter-teamed. It happens to the best of us. I think that this is a great showcase of the innovation happening in Gen 5 OU right now. Gen 5 has a reputation for being kind of solved and like every team is the same. Not the case recently. This is not the only crazy team I've seen in SPL. This SPL, I saw Drapion in an earlier game. I think that won a game, which is crazy. I also saw like a Mew plus Jolteon hyper offense. There's been a rise of Sun and Hail teams. 
I think I might be covering Gen 5 more on the channel because a lot's happening in Gen 5. People are getting really experimental and the previous ideas of what's good are kind of being thrown into the trash. This is a perfect showcase of this. Lapras getting a victory against what used to be standard rain. Perhaps Lapras rain will be the new standard. Lapras is taking over. This is it. This is the world we live in. The modern Gen 5 metagame we could not have possibly conceived of in our wildest dreams. Thank you for watching, folks, and I'll catch you later.